Today, I'll take you through the process of making your first tin type. When it comes to measuring and mixing chemistry, it's handy to know that each component acts independently of all the others and that you have some wiggle room regarding the amounts used. You don't have to worry about getting every weight or volume spot on. The silver bath. Concentrations between 7 and 10 percent work nicely. 70 grams of silver nitrate crystals dissolved in 1,000 milliliters of distilled water will produce a 7% concentration of silver nitrate. Stock collodion. To make 8 ounces of base, start with a 250 milliliter beaker and pour in 64 milliliters of plain collodion. This is the thick syrupy liquid. Then, in a separate beaker, mix 22 milliliters of ethyl alcohol, which is 180 proof or higher. This is important, and 40 milliliters of ethyl ether. Pour this into the collodion and stir with a glass rod. Transfer this to a glass bottle and cap tightly. It's worth noting that the alcohol and ether mixture is merely a thinner for the thicker collodion. If you monkey around with the proportions of alcohol and ether, you'll find that a higher percentage of ether will make the film tougher, but it shrinks more while a greater percentage of alcohol will make the film spongier and more fragile, but it shrinks less and sticks better, which is useful to know when working with glass. The Sensitizer To make the sensitizer for 8 ounces of stock, mix the following in a 50 milliliter beaker. 2 milliliters of distilled water, 1 gram of potassium iodide, and 3 quarters of a gram of cadmium bromide. Use a glass rod to break up any clumps of cadmium bromide. When all is completely dissolved, add 20 milliliters of ethyl alcohol, 180 proof. Mix with a glass rod, then pour this into your collodion mixture. Shake or stir to mix completely. Allow the collodion to rest for a few days to allow any cloudiness to settle out. The developer. To make 8 ounces of developer, pour 175 milliliters of distilled water into a 250 milliliter beaker. Add 7.5 grams of ferrous sulfate, 7 milliliters of acetic acid, glacial, and 9 milliliters of ethyl alcohol. Make sure all of the ferrous sulfate is completely dissolved. Then filter the solution before bottling. It's worth noting that the developer is ferrous sulfate alone, but it's very aggressive. The acid acts as a restrainer, which slows it down. The alcohol is used as a wetting agent, so it will flow over the plate without beating up. Each can be adjusted independently of the others, depending upon your needs. The Fixer To make 32 ounces of Fixer, start with 1,000 milliliters of distilled water and mix into this 160 grams of hypo, which is sodium thiosulfate. Another useful tidbit, to completely fix a plate, fix for twice as long as is required for the plate to clear. As the fixer is used, it begins to saturate and works more slowly. When the time to clear a plate is twice what it took with fresh fixer, it's time to replace the old fixer with a new batch. The tin. The tin is actually aluminum sheet that's been coated with a gloss black finish and covered with a protective plastic sheet that needs to be removed before use. Coated aluminum is an industrial material which collodion photographers have co-opted for use in photography because it's handy, convenient, and pretty reliable. However, because the manufacturers of this product are making huge volumes of it for industrial and architectural purposes, they aren't even aware that we're trying to use it for photography. Occasionally, you'll find a few sheets of tin that give difficulty in one form or another, but many of these difficulties go away if development times are kept to a minimum. The workspace. Here's a typical darkroom layout with a workflow moving from left to right. A word about safety. Some of the chemistry used in this process is potentially dangerous. Treat all chemicals with respect and handle them carefully. Familiarize yourself with MSD sheets for all chemistry used. Avoid creating chemical dust which can be inhaled. Avoid splashing chemistry around, especially the silver nitrate. Always wear protective gear, gloves, and safety glasses. Wash with running water in the event you get chemistry on your skin. 
Wipe any spills from the work area as soon as practical. The process. Step one, coat the plate. This can be done in daylight. Select a sheet of tin that fits easily into your plate holder. Leave a little wiggle room so that nothing gets jammed or stuck. Peel the plastic coating from the back side of the tin. Pour a pool of sensitized collodion onto the center of the plate. Keep the pool as circular as possible and stop pouring when the edges of the pool near the long sides of the plate. Tip the plate gently toward you and to the left. This will cause the collodion pool to flow toward the front left corner. Then tip the plate away and to the right and finally forward again to drain the excess collodion back into the bottle. Tip the plate from landscape to portrait orientations while draining the excess collodion from the plate. This will minimize any flow lines that may form in the collodion film. Step 2. Sensitize. When the collodion skins over and becomes tacky to the touch, skinned over but not slippery wet, dip the plate into the silver nitrate bath. Immerse the plate smoothly, steadily, and with intent. Close the cover on the dip tank and wait for about three minutes. Remove the plate from the bath and inspect. The liquid should drain smoothly from the plate. If you see legs in the liquid, the plate needs to soak a little longer. If the plate flows smoothly, remove it from the sensitizer and allow it to drain thoroughly over the bath. Then, blot the edges of the plate to remove any excess silver nitrate. Place the plate collodion side down on the support corners of the plate holder. Blot the back side of the plate to remove any excess silver nitrate. When you hear wet plate, think moist plate. The less silver you have on your film holder, the easier it is to clean, and the less trouble you'll have with contamination issues later on. If you're using a modified film holder, place a pressure spring between the plate and the dark slide, then close the dark slide completely. Step three, exposing. Place the plate holder in the camera, place the lens cap on the lens, remove the dark slide, Expose the image using the lens cap as the shutter. Replace the lens cap, close the dark slide, remove the plate holder, and return to the darkroom for processing. All of these steps must be done within a four to five minute window of time before the film begins to dry out. Step four, development. Remove the plate from the plate holder. Hold it horizontally over the development catch tray. In one smooth, quick motion, flow the developer over the surface of the plate by pouring along one edge. Use only enough developer to cover the surface and no more. 10 milliliters for a 4x5 plate is plenty. Keep the plate horizontal and in constant motion. An image should begin to appear in about 10 seconds. When this happens, stop the development with running water. Step 5. Fixing. Once the plate is thoroughly rinsed after development and the water sheets smoothly from the plate, the white lights can be turned on again. Place the plate in a fixer bath. As the fixer removes the undeveloped silver halides from the plate, the milky appearance will disappear and the plate will begin looking like a normal print. When the plate is clear, allow the fixer to work for an additional minute or two. Remove the plate, rinse in clear water, and wash for five minutes. Step six, drying. Remove the plate from the wash water and place on a drying rack. Allow the plate to air dry for at least 24 hours before sealing the plate with varnish or wax. As the plate dries, the highlights will dry up in tone by as much as one stop. Because of this, it's important to completely dry your test plates with a blow dryer or by laying them in the sun before evaluating them for proper exposure. Step 7. Sealing. Once the plate is dry, it needs to be sealed from exposure to air. If it's not sealed, the image, which is formed by deposits of silver metal, will begin to tarnish over time. The traditional method of sealing a wet plate image is to apply a coating of Sandorac varnish, which both seals and protects the surface of the image from contact damage. A quicker method, which will seal but not protect, is to apply a wax finish. In summary, most of the wet plate process can be done in white light conditions. Keep your tools and workspace clean to avoid contamination issues. Don't hurry, but work efficiently and methodically. Think moist plate when you hear wet plate. 
Keep development times to a minimum, no more than 15 seconds. Most problems are the result of overdevelopment. I hope this provided some useful stuff to think about. Have fun, and thanks for watching.